Hi guys, welcome to my new Task 1 academic series. Today we'll be starting with line graphs uh, and in future videos you'll be able to learn about all the other Task 1s that you'll need. Before we begin though, I should just explain that this video series is designed to be uh, not too complicated. I'm trying to teach you what you need to know for the test, but nothing be beyond that. You, I don't want to teach you all the fancy things that will just confuse you. I want to keep it straight, clear and simple so you can prepare in a reasonable amount of time. As I said today, we're going to be looking at line graphs first. So let's jump straight into the video. Uh, line, line graphs. So for each task one academic, usually I try to write four paragraphs. I try to write intro an introduction, an overview, a body one, and a body two. Now some people put the overview as a conclusion, but my personal preference is to put the overview after the introduction, and I will show you what I mean soon. Now, firstly we need to look at the data, so let's read it out here. It says, the graph below shows the number of people in poverty in the United States by community from 1970 to 2015. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So for our introduction, all we have to do is say that top sentence again in our own words. That top sentence being the graph below shows blah, blah, blah. The one below it, you don't have to worry about. So for our introduction, let's just see what I've done. You don't have to worry about anything else yet except paraphrasing that first statement and maybe borrowing a little bit from the data below. So here's my one. I'll read it out for you. I say, the line graph illustrates how many people lived in poverty across the United States between 1970 and 2015, broken down into suburbs, cities, small metros and rural areas. You'll notice I added that last part, suburbs, cities, small metros and rural areas. I'm taking that from the data, okay? Taking that from the image. I'm not taking any specific numbers. Uh, I can take years, but no specific numbers in my introduction. That's not the job of your introduction or your overview, really. So that's your introduction done. As you can see, I've just said what they said in my own words. For example, they say from 1970 to 2015. I say between 1970 and 2015. They say the graph below shows. I say the line graph illustrates. So um, if they say shows, I have some backup options. I say illustrates or gives information about. If they say illustrates, I say shows or gives information about. If they say gives information about, I use shows or illustrates. Basically, I've just got the three and I play with them so I'm not using what they use. By the way, when they say below, you don't need to say below. You can, you can drop that word. Okay, that's our introduction. Next, we have to do our overview. Now, the overview is the hardest part, I think, of these, but also the most important part. Um, the criteria really looks at the overview um, at, for a large part of your score. So I think that's why it's a good idea to do the overview early rather than last. Because if you run out of time and you don't have an overview, you're in big trouble with your score. Now, what is an overview? An overview is basically a matter of finding the main features of the data. So imagine you're looking at the data just like a child and, and just sort of say to yourself, what do I see? You don't have to be too detailed, but what do I see? So let, let's do it together here. We've got our suburbs, many uh, cities, small metros and rural areas. So have a look at all the lines. What do you see? Well, I see the lines generally going up, okay? Sort of to the right and up a little bit, generally speaking. Now, I've got to be careful because if I look at the rural rural areas, it sort of goes down, up, down, up, and it actually ends slightly below. So I'll keep that in mind, but generally speaking, 
everything goes up. In other words, poverty goes up across the United States in almost all places. Another thing I can see is the year 2000. Everything goes up from there. I wonder what happened in the year 2000. I wonder why poverty increased there. I'm not sure, but anyway, that's something I notice as well. Now, maybe you see other main features here. And if you do, that's okay. Make sure that you find at least like two. There should be at least two things to say. If there are more obvious main features, um, you can put them in as well in your overview. So let's have a look at what I said for my overview. I said, overall, there was an increase in poverty levels over the period across all groups with the exception of rural areas. So remember what I said, everything goes up. So that's what I say here, overall. Now, I always say overall just to show the examiner that this is my overview, just to make it really clear. Overall, comma, everything went up. There was an increase in poverty levels over the period. But remember, rural areas didn't actually go up. So I have to include that exception, okay? With the exception of rural areas. Make sure, you, um, make sure you don't lie, okay? Just because everything is going in that direction and there's only one outlier, make sure you explain that everything except this one. That's important. Uh, the other point. Also, there was a notable increase in poverty from the year 2000. So they were the two things I found. As I said, you should be at least able to find a couple of things, if not more. Uh, you don't want your overview to be too thin. Next, uh, we go into the details of uh, what you've got. So, usually you can break your writing into two main paragraphs, a body one and a body two paragraph. I sometimes write one. Uh, usually, if it's for maps, I might have to write one sometimes three but almost always two so I recommend two if you can what am I going to talk about first well all I'm going to do is talk about two of the lines I can choose whichever ones I want but all we're going to do with these line graphs is talk about the beginning what happens in the middle and the final uh, final number that's all it is what happens in the beginning what happens in the middle and the final number You'll see it's actually really simple. Let's look at body one now. So in 1970, what is 1970? That's the beginning. In 1970, just over seven million people lived in uh, sorry, seven million people in cities lived in poverty. A number that rose steadily, reaching a total of just under 13 million people by 2015. Okay, so I started with the red line. 1970 first figure 7 million then what happens in the middle number rose steadily what happened at the end reached just under 13 million people so again beginning number what happens in the middle and the closing number next poverty levels in 1970 for suburban areas so that's the dark blue line for suburban areas were similar to those of cities at just under 7 million. So that's my first figure, 7 million. These areas then saw similar steady rises in poverty to those experienced by cities. So again, what happened in the middle? A steady rise. However, from the year 2000, poverty level, uh, levels in suburbs rose sharply, which resulted in suburbs having more people in poverty than any other community type at a final figure of 16 million people. So again, started just under 7 million. Steady rise, particularly from the year 2000, final figure 16 million people. So the beginning, steady rise, ooh, and a really big rise from 2000, final figure. That's all it is. Beginning, what happens, end point. Next paragraph, what am I going to do? Of course, the next two lines. Again, back to the beginning and let's choose small metros this time, the yellow line. At the beginning of the period, the total number of people in poverty was the lowest in small metros, at just over 5 million. So in other words, at the beginning, 5 million. 
what happened? As was the case for cities and suburbs, this number rose over the period and reached almost 10 million by 2015. Simple, okay? Here, rows reached 10, almost 10 million. In contrast, or on the other hand, poverty in rural areas saw a slight decrease over the period, falling to slightly under its opening level of 8 million. So in other words, I'm saying the opening number was 8 million at the beginning, and the closing number was just below that. So I've been a bit fancy there, but again, I'm just saying it was 8 million ended just below that. Same thing. So firstly, you should understand all you're doing with these line graphs, what happened, what's the number in the beginning, what happens in the middle, what happens at the end, and we're done. The second point that I haven't talked about yet is putting your data, your graphs data, in relation to the data around it. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we go back over the entire text, I want to point out a few things here. This is going to be in the body paragraphs where you do this. So remember the actual question requires you to summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, you have to show comparison. So that means I need to present the data in context of the data around it. And let's look now at all the times I did that. In 1970, just over 7 million people in cities lived in poverty, a number that rose steadily reaching a total of just under 13 million people by 2015. Now, of course, here I'm presenting new information. I can't give comparison yet. Now, in this next sentence, I can. Poverty levels in 1970 for suburban areas were similar, okay, to those of cities. Why did I say were similar to those of cities? Because I'm trying to show comparison. A mistake some people make is they go, okay, this is the beginning number, this is the middle, this is the end. Beginning number, middle, end, begin. And they never put that data in relation to the data around it. If you do that, you're going to get a very low score. Make sure you're always doing this. Comparatives and superlatives are a great way. Comparative adjectives such as uh, more, bigger, in this case, uh, similar to. Uh, let's keep going. Next, these areas then saw similar, again I'm using the word similar, steady rises in poverty to those experienced by cities. That whole sentence here is just me putting the data in relation to what's around it, showing comparison and contrast. Even this word here, however, that shows contrast. However, from the year 2000, poverty levels in suburbs rose sharply, which resulted in suburbs having more uh, people in poverty than any other community type. See this bit? Which resulted in suburbs having more people in poverty than any other community type. All of that there, I, I could leave that out and I could still present the data, but all of that is just to show contrast and comparison to help me get a better score. Alright, let's go to the second body paragraph and try and see a little bit more of this comparison and contrast. At the beginning of the period, the total number of people in poverty was the lowest. Notice I'm saying the lowest, that's a superlative. That puts this data in context of all the data around it. Uh, in small metros, at just over 5 million. As was the case for cities and suburbs. So, as was the case, meaning in the same way, or similar to cities and suburbs. Again, comparative language. This number rose over the period and reached almost 10 million by 2015. In contrast, clearly that's contrasting language. In contrast, poverty in rural areas saw a slight decrease over the period, falling to slightly under its opening level. That's kind of contrasting within um, data. But anyway, we'll skip past that. That's not so much. But yeah, in contrast, comparative language, poverty in rural areas saw a slight decrease over the period, 
falling to slightly under its opening level of 8 million by the end of the period. There you go. Let's move on to some key vocabulary that I think is useful. I mean, a lot of textbooks will give you a thousand different words, but I think these are all the ones you need. These line graphs, they only ever do a few things. They go up, they go down, or they go up and down. I'll give you two words for going up, rise and increase. Two words for going down is fall and decrease. The word for going up and down is fluctuate. Now the word rise can be a verb or it can be a noun. If it is a noun, it is a countable noun. So you would say there was a rise. If it is a verb, you would say this number rose, if it's past tense, for example. Again, if the word, for example, rise is a noun, you can add an adjective to it. So here are a list of adjectives that you can add to any of these. All right. So one is slight, which means a little bit. So a slight rise. Steep, which means a lot, right? A steep rise, a sharp rise. A significant rise, a marked rise, it's a bit fancy that one, a marginal rise or a little bit. Next, look, it, it's the same It's the same for the other ones really. So fall, again, a slight fall, a steep fall, a sharp fall. Now if you use them as a verb, for example the word rose, you could say it rose slightly, not it, there was a slight rose, you'd say it rose slightly, it fell steeply, it increased sharply, it increased slightly, it decreased significantly. You get the idea. You could apply it to the word fluctuate as well. And so that's pretty much it, okay? That's your line graphs. Remember, line graphs give the, f the beginning, what happens in the middle, and the end, and put the data in relationship to the data around it using comparison and contrast. So mostly um, superlatives, comparatives, so more, less, expressions like in contrast, uh, and expressions like similar to, etc. If you do that, you should get a good score. For example, I think this one would get at least an 8, probably a 9 even. And it, as you can see, it's a really simple approach. In the next video, we'll look at pie charts. Stick around. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, let's get into pie charts in the next video. Thanks, guys.